Hello guys, I am Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we are here with lesson number five on using the most excellent SketchUp CAD software. Now, if you've been through the first four lessons, you know what we're trying to do is we're trying to sort of learn how to use SketchUp in the context of 3D printing. And so we're trying to exercise the workflow. We draw something or design something, we then print it, then after we print it, we want to come in and measure it and see how we're doing on achieving in hardware the things that we are trying to design in software. And so if you remember last week in lesson four, we designed this most excellent widget to kind of play around a little bit with dimensions. And so when lesson four ended, we had sent this to the printer. And so today we're going to learn how to do a little bit of evaluation on uh, the precision of the parts that we're printing. So we will learn how to use digital calipers. Okay. You can pick some up I'll give you a link down uh, below and you can go to toptechboy.com go to this lesson and I'll give you a link to some uh, some options that are available on Amazon basically you can get a good pair of these for somewhere between 25 and 40 dollars and I really like the metal ones like this one uh, I don't like the plastic ones so much because they are just not very accurate okay when lesson four ended we had submitted this design we had submitted this design to the 3D printer and I am happy to report it is now printed. And so let's look at this. Looks a lot like, uh, let's see, looks a lot like we, what we designed there. But how precise were we in getting in hardware the design that we actually uh, put into software? So let's play around with that. Let me see if first of all, I should probably get out of your way all right and then we can go over here to this overhead all right now there's some tricks to using these calipers to get uh, good measurements and we want to be uh, we want to be a little bit careful because if you're not careful and deliberate in some things uh, you cannot get really good uh, really good results and so let's look at the first uh, the first dimensions that we were trying to get here uh, this we had set this dimension and I think I'll put it like this we had set or I guess actually I designed it like this. We had set this dimension, which would be this dimension here. We wanted 25 millimeters. And so let's get our calipers. And the first thing you want to do is kind of close them up nice and snug. Now you want to select what unit you're working in. All right. Mine will go in either inches or millimeters. So I want to set it to millimeters. Then I want to really close it well, kind of pinch it closed. I don't like using this wheel so much. Okay. I like kind of pinching on it here and getting it closed. And you see as I close it, it's not really reading exactly zero. So I want to come in and I want to click the zero button. And that's sort of like tearing your scales. What it will do is it will set what you think is zero, it will set to zero. So now on this dimension here, we were expecting 25 millimeters. All right. Now you've got to be a little bit careful about making a measurement and I want to, I'm going to exaggerate it, but I want to show you why you typically a lot of times don't get accurate measurements when you're using uh, calipers. The first thing is you come in and you want to make sure that you're not measuring like this or like this. So in other words, you've got to make sure that your model is square with your tool. And so what I like to do is I like to just kind of come in on it and then just squeeze in like that. Okay. So you've got to make sure that you're not cockeyed this way. You're not cockeyed this way. And that probably wouldn't happen in a model like this, but there's also another error. I'm exaggerating it, but do you see if I am like this, right? Like if I am not flush with it if I'm not square with it. You see how I'm going to be measuring kind of a hypotenuse and not measuring the linear distance across. So I want to make sure that I am not cocking it one way or the other. And then like I say, I don't like using this wheel. I like to just kind of come in and squeeze in on it and then make sure, make sure that I am getting uh, 
right flush with that and then what you can see is I am getting about 25.02 millimeters if you squeeze it hard you can actually compress it a little bit but it seems like the thing that I'm really measuring is 25.02 millimeters now let's think about that if this was uh, 2.5 off that would be 10 percent 0.25 off would be 1%, and so 0.02 would be like 0.01%. And so that is just absolutely dead on in that dimension. Similarly, across this way, we were trying to get 75 millimeters. So again, let me be deliberate in getting this not cockeyed and getting it nice and square and flush. Okay, not, not measuring any type of diagonal. Okay, and here I am measuring 75.12, let's say 75.12. So that's 0.12 off. So if I was, if I was 7.5 off, that would be 1%. 0 0.75 would be, uh, if I was 7.5, that would be 10% off. 0.75 would be 1% off, 0.075 would be 0.1% off, and so it looks like that I'm probably about 0.2% off, and so that again is just really, really good. Maybe even I could probably get it, that's probably, if I put it in there very deliberately, that is probably again more like uh, point. Uh, let's see, 75 again, that's kind of hard, 7.5 would be 10%. 0.75 would be 1%. It looks like I'm getting very close to 0.1% accuracy in that dimension. Okay, so what you do is you close it up and then you can measure the distance between these two tongs and that's what reads here. All right, let's look and see something else. Uh, let's look at this uh, protrusion that we brought out and it looks like we were trying to make that uh, it looks like we were trying to make that 15 millimeters and so let's come in and again being very careful to get it in there square and it looks like we are 14.98 again within a tenth of a percent on that dimension this we had set for five millimeters and that is just again right dead on so that is looking really 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 good okay let's come in and measure this this was supposed to be a radius or a diameter of 15 and again we're looking very good this is coming in a little bit shy okay just a little bit shy that's probably 0.1 off so this is getting a little bit closer to 1% error here but again it's uh, very very close so using the calipers the key is set your unit okay the second key is zero it all right zero it after you uh, close it up and then what you want to do is you want to be careful and mindful that you are not getting this in here skewed in some way to be measuring kind of like a hypotenuse instead of a, a perpendicular distance. Okay, there are more things that you can do with this. You see how we uh, put some holes in there and we were trying to get the holes 15 millimeters deep. How do you measure the holes? Well, if you look on the back side of these, do you see how there is a depth gauge that comes out? And so what you can do is you can put the depth gauge down into the hole and then press down until you hit the ridge. Let's see if you can see how I'm doing that. I'll try it again so you can maybe see it a little better. Okay, so I'm putting that down in the hole and then bringing it right up against that top edge and now it's telling me this distance here I was shooting for 15 and the hole turned out to be 14.96 again just a few uh, tenths of a percent let's measure this slot depth as well it's supposed to be 15 uh, let's try it again okay 15.14 very 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 accurate now there's one more thing that you can measure we would be interested in the inside dimension of the hole the inside dimension of these slots now what you would not want to do is come up and try to eyeball it and try to do something really silly like this because it gives you 
some references to measure inside uh, inside diameter okay so what you're going to do is you're going to come in the hole with these two and then spread them out till they hit the edges so let's see what we got on this hole we were shooting for 15 on the hole and it looks like we uh, again wanting to make sure we're getting the largest extent looks like we are getting about 15.01 so we are really, really close on the diameter of that hole. But let's go ahead and look at the slot, right? We also have a slot. And uh, let me turn this back on. Okay, looks like it zeroed well. And so on this slot, from here to here, we expect 15. And so let's see how precisely we hit that. And it looks very good, 15.03. This one's going to be a little hard to get in there okay and uh let's see 5.1 where we were expecting five and i'm not sure i might have had that uh, off just a little bit let me try to get in there just a little bit better ah i need to get this right where i can see my work Okay, looks like about 5.07. All right, well, what I hope you can see is, is that in our kind of mechanical engineering work, what we want to do is we want to, first of all, sketch things up on paper so we have all of our what, all of our dimensions, and all of our locations. Then we want to put that in SketchUp, being very mindful of setting dimensions and locations, being very mindful of keeping things symmetric and neat. Then we want to print to the 3D printer, or we want to fabricate more generally. And then after fabrication, we want to do a little evaluation. So what I kind of conclude from what we've done here, for most things, I am uh, about usually about 0.1% accurate in achieving the dimension that I'm targeting. Uh, I would say that for the circle, uh, for the extruded uh, peg, maybe a little bit more like 1%. So between 0.1% and 1% would be kind of the precision that I have of matching my model to what my design is. Okay. So that kind of wraps up this simple one, uh, the simple lesson of how to use calipers. Uh, next week, what we are going to do, that would be lesson six. We're going to start looking at trying to determine some design rules because when you design things, it's not just about drawing things in SketchUp. It's about drawing things that you can manufacture. So sort of, uh, I would call it design for manufacturing, making sure that the things that we are drawing are within the tolerances and the capability of the tool that we have. And so what we're going to do is we're going to come in and just start drawing like little slots and see how small of a slot that we can design that will still print. So we're going to kind of put together a design for what I would call like a design rule checker to try to understand what the tolerances are and what the precision and, and, and how small of a line can we make in on the 3D printer, how small of a gap we can make on the 3D printer. That will be the next lesson. Okay, guys, really appreciate your attention. This is Paul McWhorter from toptechboy.com. If you like this video, think about giving us a thumbs up. Think about subscribing to that channel. Maybe even share this with your friends. Let's get more people working on some mechanical design. I will talk to you guys later.